summertime and the living is easy fish are jumping and the cotton is high your daddy's rich and your mama's good looking well mine is so hush little baby don't you cry don't cry don't cry there's plenty to smile and laugh about hello good evening uh, somebody says, what version are you singing? I have no idea. <laughs> yes, and KFP says, happy non-binary day. Happy non-binary day, everyone. Um, I found the perfect way to celebrate, and that was by taking some of these lovely stickers out into the world and to stick them up in places where people can see them. Um, so actually, um, this morning, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Let's just have a look in the chat and see who's there. Hello, Lorna. How are you doing? Oh, this is an interesting name. I don't know how to say it. Polar. I'll just stick with the first name. Wayward. Hello. Hello. Miss Love. KFP. Rose. Lenka. Oh, the lovely poems. Radical. Girl. Hi, Stella. Um, Pam. Maggie. Elizabeth. Riff Raff Rabble, Stranger Than Life. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for um, joining me this evening. Moody and Rudy, hello. Okay, so yeah, no binary day. Ugh. Um, this morning I got on the tr stuck in my hair. That's great. Uh, I was swimming in the sea today, so mm, the salt uh, hair is wreaking havoc with my. Uh, my main. Hello from Canada. Hi, Canada. And San Diego in the house. And Switzerland. Oh, wow. This is a truly international affair. Uh, anyways, okay. So this morning um, I got on the tube. Um, and uh, KFP asked, did you see any mermaids? I, I didn't, but I, I did see a magical creature that may be, well be a supporter of mermaids. Um, hello, Massachusetts, as well. Uh, so I got on. Can anybody hear me? Okay, everybody hear me? Okay. And Greece, Yasu, Tikanis Kala, want some olive oil for that hair? <laughs> okay. Uh, somebody's asking, what are mermaids? Mermaids is a charity in the UK that will have you believe that if a boy plays with dolls, they need to be on a lifetime of uh medication and potential surgeries um okie doke so i got in I, I went down into the tube station and i saw a tall man um in women's clothes with a you know very girly hairdo um curly hair till about here in like a, a bob kind of thing but curly really uh when it's not just iris um Red lipstick and, of course, pink, white, and blue eyeshadow. Very tall guy, broad shoulders, and he wore like a silk blouse um, with a big black, a black silk blouse with a black silk bow that was part of the blouse. And he had a skirt, a really wide skirt, uh, probably ankle length, rainbow socks. And um, who sat down um, on the tube, just sort of diagonally across from me um, with a friend. He had golden earrings. They were like snakes, like wriggly snakes. They were quite, quite big like that. Um, now, if that is a man and he wears that stuff and all that, and he says, I'm a man and wearing this, doesn't make me any less of a man, then I'd be all for that because that's, I feel, how you break gender stereotypes and how you broaden the bandwidth of being a man. Um, uh, who knows? Uh, anyways, uh, his friend, he was there with a female friend and she kind of, you know, did that with a little pinky finger and then uh, took some of the lipstick away from the corners of his mouth, which was quite funny. Um, 
And he was so tall that when he stood up, he, his head nearly touched the top of the, the, the carriage. Um, so as I said earlier, if this is a man and he says, this doesn't make me any less of a man and I'm a bloke and um, I'm good with that and I use men's spaces, then I'm, I'm all for that. Uh, but if he goes into, I was just imagining him going into the ladies' toilet with those shoulders and that height and clearly being male. And I just thought, mm, um, obviously, I, I wouldn't be. I think plenty of women wouldn't be happy with that. Um, so I, I took one of, of, of these lovelies and I stuck it on an ad, advert just sort of above my head, just next to me. It was a very pink, plain background. So I thought this sticker would stand out. Um, and both of them saw me put that on and kind of went. Um, but uh, anyway, that was my morning turf -ry. Um Let's have a look at the chat oh somebody said they just got suspended from twitter well as we know hashtag twitter hates women i'm sorry to hear that um i bet he th somebody says i bet he thought he was a chuffing lesbian well who knows who knows obviously i didn't i didn't ask um <laughs> i just put the sticker up so then um i went to brighton and on St. James Street, uh, which is on the way to the beach, there is um, a place called the Trans Pride Centre. It's just a small um, place. It looks a bit shabby. Uh, and I wasn't sure if it was a shop or some kind of community centre. But the door was open. And through the window, I could see they had some cards from protest um, framed on the wall and one said stop killing us and one said uh, trans women are not a threat so I thought well I could always just pop in and have a look and um, so I did tea mm. Mm. this is the ro the royal blend from uh, Fortnum and Masons. Not that I shopped there, it was a gift. Um, so I went in and um, there were three men and, um, you know, in two in, in dresses. Um, And I just asked, oh, are you open? Is it okay to come in? And they were like, yeah, come in. We're just leaving. So two of them actually, yeah, we're just leaving. <laughs> Not quite like that, but they were obviously male. Um, and then um, they left. So it was just me and the person looking after the place who was, again, quite a tall guy, um, 50s, I think, with a really, really bad black wig, like a really... Looked like a really cheap one from a party store, like a 10, 15 pound wig. Um, and he had some, um, not eyeliner, but you know, when you use like a pencil uh, rather than one of those liquid eyeliners, like all around, then it was just all over the place and smudged. Then it, it was just like, um, so um, I just asked, hey, what is this? And um, he explained um, that it was, uh, these were placards from, protests i think from maybe after the after george floyd was killed by that police officer in the states uh, somebody says buena sera buena sera and zoe's in the house hello nice to see you and uh he sat down at a desk with a laptop and i just stood there it's a very small it's just like a, a living room kind of space uh, it, maybe double the size of this room here. And um, I just had a, hi, Catherine. I just had a, a look at the different posters and what they, or the placards and what they said. So they'd been framed and they had been displayed before uh, at an exhibition by a place in London that I hadn't heard of before called the Museum of Transology. Transology. And this, because they were made in response to George Floyd, which obviously this has nothing to do with trends, um, but it was all focused on, you know, the trans women of color who are 
uh, apparently um, the most oppressed in the world and being killed left, right, and center. So they um, they had signs saying, stop killing us, and trans women are not a threat. Uh, what was another one? Something about the cis, the cis system, but system with C-I-S, um, and that the gay movement, it says something like one said, like the gay movement was um, built on the backs of trans women of color, so you have to stand with us now. And another one saying white gays have to stand with trans something along those lines just very brief um so as i was looking around i said you know um some of these placards they're uh, they're a bit <clears throat> um and he just like well they were from that protest and um Oh, and they, of course, had Marsha P. Johnson there uh, in a picture. And um, it's like half of them were about uh, them being killed. And and the other half was about forcing this, you must support us, you must support us. Um, so we just had a, a chat. I mean, I wasn't being confrontational. I just thought, let's ask some questions. So I said, oh, look at that one. Stop killing us. I said, how many are, are being killed in the UK? Um, and he said, well, I don't have the stats. I said, oh, um, I said, is this a problem in the UK? And he's like, well, 10 years ago. So he had an example about somebody 10 years ago. Um, so. Uh, and then he started talking about Brazil and America as in the States. Um, so I asked again, okay, but what about the UK? I said, um, you know, I know I know that gay men have been murdered, like in, in or in Ireland this year, two gay men were decapitated. And he just goes, Oh, I hadn't heard about that. I said, Yeah, and then there were the three guys in Reading that were murdered. Um there was the guy, the gay man that was beaten to death in, in Wales. Um, so what about the trans murders? And he just went, oh, I don't have the statistics, and talked about something from 10 years ago. So maybe then he already started thinking, okay, this is not someone, this is someone who who is a bit more, you know, critical. Um, so then um, what else did he say? He said something like, because we, we did have quite like a friendly chat um, and he said something that he knew that he was trans from the age of three. Um, and that there were many versions of trans, and that if, and then he went on to talk about trans children. So it's, it's the usual talking points: it's murder everywhere, genocide, and then the trans children. We have to save the trans children. Um, so I asked, "Oh, what, what, what sort of, how, did, what did that feel like?" If you don't mind me asking, um, at three, and he's like, "Well, it's hard to explain." And then um, I, I just said, "You know what?" As a, a <laughs> As a gender non-conforming gay man, I said, I've always, hey, is Rex in the house? Rex Landy waves in turfs, Kia, Ora, Tatu, Katoa. Hi, uh, good to see you. Um, oh God, Rex, if you'd been there, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> it would have been a very different meeting. Um, uh, what, what was I gonna say? I forgot, lost my track of thought. Um, train of thought, track of thought, train, track, track, train. Anyways, T. Um, oh, yeah, okay, so usual talking points, the genocides, the murders, uh, for which there are no stats, or he, he didn't have any stats, and then um, a trans child. Right, okay, somebody's just reminded me, thank you very much. So I went, has a gender non-performing gay man. Um, I said, I've always, you know, people used to tell me as a child that I should have been born a girl. Uh, as a teenager, I used to get that and people saying, oh, you really just want to be a woman, don't you? And the whole thing that if you're a gay man, that somehow you're less of a man and a, a woman trapped in a man's body. And I said, I've been fighting that, you know, for decades. And now it seems that somehow these ideas are being used to say, actually, this is the way to your authentic self. Uh, and he just kind of went, well, it's different for everyone. And. Uh, uh, but no one's pushing anyone to be trans. No one's pushing anyone to be trans. 
Um, and then there was the mention of, and I said, well, you know, if, if I was a 13 year old today and feeling like I did back then, but with a mobile phone and access to TikTok and Instagram and Tumblr, who knows? And he's like, well, you know, it's, it, you just know it yourself. You know it yourself. Um, no one, no one's forcing anyone to be trans. Um, and then he said something about surgeries that doesn't happen until you're 18. And I'm like, well, in the States, they do it from the age of 12. And I think this is when he started going, who is this person and what does he want? Um, and it's like, there's no surgery until you're 18. And I'm like, well, there were like 50 or um, who had been referred for double mastectomies at the age, from the age of 16. Um, and puberty blockers they'd given, the youngest I think was 10 at the Travis stock. Um, and, um, and it's like, no, that they, they, you know, it's like, but they don't give cross sex hormones till, you know. Did he say 18? I think he even said 18 or something. But, um, and I said, well, actually, have you heard of what was his name? And I kind of were like, mm, mm, what was his name? Can't quite remember. Webberly. Did you hear about Michael Webberly? And he's like, mm. and I'm like, that's the guy who's just been struck off. He's just been struck off by his professional body because um, apparently he got this 12-year-old testosterone at 12, you know, from just like a quick chat online. Uh, so he's like, uh, no, I think you got that wrong. I think you got that wrong. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I'll check it. I'll, I'll have to check it out again. But I do remember that's why he was struck off because, you know, there was no proper care for the patients. And this wasn't done via the NHS or so. This was just like private. So, I mean, obviously the waiting lists are crazy. And he went, yeah, the waiting lists are, are, are very long. I said, and I just think sometimes, you know, are there people who are taking advantage of that? Like this Marco Werberly. And he's like, well, I think you got that wrong, you know, that case. I said, well, I will check it out. But did you know his wife was also taken to a tribunal by this professional body? And that she was found guilty of about 30 charges. And she's just waiting for, like, um, what, what the punishment is going to be. And then he went, do you know, I have a lot of things to do. I'm very busy. <laughs> so I just went, okay, well, thank you very much for your time. And then um, and then I left. So I, I did think, should I just, should I just poke my head around the door and go, P.S., a woman is an adult human female, not you. But uh, I don't know. I thought that would be, I don't know. I, I didn't, would that have been too much? Um, I don't know, because I think he was probably <laughs> felt uneasy and unsafe enough as it was. Our Bond, thank you so much for your five pounds. And that sticker is a, oh, it's a little creature holding a small creature and giving it a kiss it's a lovely sticker thank you so much much appreciated rex you're saying i go to shops where assistants believe the bullshit and trigger them. oh you trigger them on purpose um i didn't know i didn't know i was kind of, i kind of thought like okay let's let's just you, i could just say it very calmly i could have actually said well i'll leave you with a gift and give him one of these but this was so obviously a man. He was so obviously a man. Um, and how he can tell himself with that bad wig and that awful eye pencil stuff around his eyes it, it looked like he just put it on and then gone like that and that wig that wasn't even on properly and hadn't looked after it and it, it's not ugh, you really want me to think of you as belonging in the same class as my mum like really or my sisters or my grandmothers or my aunts, or my friends, female friends, it's like, but they're, they believe it. They, they seem to, 
absolutely believe this. It's bizarre. Rex is saying, YWNBAW is my new t-shirt. You will never be a woman. You will never be. But I thought of getting a T-shirt printed, like a nice tank top or a singlet, right? Uh, nice and gay for, for, for the summer where it just says, I love turfs. Um, I might wear that to Brighton next time. Anyway, so that was just. Um... Then I went to Brighton. Obviously, I went to the beach, had a nice time, um, met some friends, swam in the sea, which was so lovely. Um, oh, love it, especially on a day like this. And today it was hot, hot, hot. But next, I think that's just practice for next week. Next week's let, said to be an absolute scorcher. So then uh, I took the train back about six in the evening, and it was uh, the train that just goes from Brighton to Gatwick to London, Victoria. So the train stops at Gatwick, um, and on the platform there is a big burly bloke in the 60s i think um in you know women's garb and a big hat like a one of these sun hats um and i'm just just sitting there and i just spotted this person and kind of did a double take because i'm like that's clearly a man and i went like that with my sunglasses and somehow he saw that and he just went uh <laughs> and i just went hi <laughs> And then I had another look and I'm like, that is definitely a man. Um, and then uh, we stood at the platform for a while. And then as the train pulled away, he, he kind of went up. Uh, and I looked again and he went, uh, in, in, in a really, again, bloking way. And I thought, wow, okay. On the way here, on the way back, all right. Somebody says it's all sounding very little British. <laughs> um, anyways, but um, this live stream is called um, My Visit to the House of Lords. So that was last Monday. Um, there was an event. Uh, Kane 90s kid says, yay, I'm catching men alive for the first time. Hey, man. Oh, hey, Kane. <laughs> Uh, uh, Lorna says maybe he thought he'd pulled. Who knows? I just I, I was surprised that he'd noticed me looking because I had my shades. Up. Well, I did kind of go like, hmm? um, that was funny. I didn't think they could see through the window, but anyways, um, it's funny that he spotted that. Uh, so, um, House of Lords, there was an event uh, in support of freedom of expression, and uh, it was organised by well, there were two lords and two baronesses who put that together and I got an official invite from one of the baronesses which was uh, quite incredible. Sabine says hi from New Zealand. Hi. Hello. Um, so for me, it's, for you it's early morning. And uh, so I went there on, on Monday. Now at the houses, just outside the Houses of Parliament, um, Aromatica, I, I'll get to that. I'll get to your question. Um, so, uh, on my way to the House of Parliament, um, there was a guy from Talk TV, um, and he was doing Vox Pops, where so he had his microphone and he was being all very TV like, oh, hey, hi, do you want to take part in this thing for, t for Talk TV? Which basically they had this massive sign with all the, the pictures and the names of the, the contenders to be the new leader of the Tory party and therefore uh, the new prime minister and one of them was also Piers, Piers Morgan so this has to do with Piers Morgan's show whatever um, so I walked past and I thought oh I want to get involved in this so I walked back and then uh, this guy goes hey who do you want to be the new prime minister and I said well let's have a look at this board I said the only people worth voting for on this board are the ones who know that a woman is an adult human female He's like, I wasn't expecting that. And I said, well, it's very important because people who will help you believe that trans women are women would also have me, a gay man, believe that gay men can have vaginas. 
uh, and that lesbians can have penises. And I find that rather homophobic. And he went, oh, oh, I don't know if we can use that online. <laughs> and I said, and he said, who, who, who are we going to vote for? Who would you vote for? Um, obviously, I'm not voting. But um, I just said, OK, I'll go for Kemi, you know, um, based on Kelly J. Keene's recommendation um, that I that I um, so I just left it there. Uh, but I just thought, you know, I don't know whether they they showed that yes or no. You never know. It's just like whenever you have an opportunity, <laughs> you just you just grab it. Um, so then went into the House of Lords and just queuing up. You see all these people, like big names, you know, uh, on the gender gen, gender critical side. I, um, I won't remember all of them, but behind me uh, in the queue was James S.S., uh, who's got his legal case going on. Uh, KFP says Pink News gave Penny a Politician of the Year award before. Yeah, I saw that. I wonder if they're going to ask her to return it, <laughs> just like J.K. Rowling um, returned her um, one of those humanitarian awards. Um, Peach says, I would love to be in a huge room with GC people. You know what? It was quite incredible. It was quite incredible to be in one space with all these people. So who were there? Um, fair play for women. Uh, so Nicola and Fiona, and they've been working away for years. Um, and they were the ones who won that legal victory that, uh, at least in England, uh, in the census, you have to record sex um, and you can't just fill it out well, based on gender identity. Sophia says, hello, beautiful man. Love from Portugal. OK. Bo Boa Norte? Is that how you say it in Portuguese? Well, hola. <laughs> That's a bit easier. Um, so, yes, as I said, so James Esses was there, uh, Nicola and Fiona from Fair Play for Women, Transgender Trends. So we had Shelley and Stephanie Davis arrive. Alison Bailey was in the house. Maya Forstetter was in the house. And, of course, LGB Alliance. So we had Kate and Bev and Malcolm and others from the LGB Alliance team. We had Helen Joyce um, and then... Uh, Andrew Doyle, he was kind of host, uh, comparing it. Uh, so he did a little uh, intro speech and then he introduced the other speakers. One of the speakers was Cami Badenoch. So who knows? The future prime minister. Um, who else was there? A couple of lords and baronesses. Okay, sporting legend Sharon Davies and Daly Thompson were there. Uh, and uh, it's like, whoa! Um, who else? Who else? Joe Phoenix was there. Simon Fenshaw, who was one of the original founders of Stonewall, you know, uh, when it was um, in, in the good old days, literally. And Kelly J was in the house wearing a beautiful white suit. So, I mean, there, there were more people there, obviously, and probably lots that I've... Uh, for, oh, uh, for Women Scotland were in the house. Um, Susan and Marion, and it was just, it, it felt like, it felt like a reunion, and and quite a few people I, I've, I've met at different events um, and protests, especially last year, uh, so to have them all together in one room was just like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, and then, so Andrew Doyle spoke, then um, Kemi spoke, there was a Baroness that spoke, and then there was a, a, a quick Q and answer session um, hosted by Trevor Phillips uh, with Sharon Davies and Maya Forstetter. And Maya did something that I thought was, it, it was hilarious. Uh, so she stands there at the microphone and she says, um, hi, Ellie Turf, thanks for joining. Uh, Maya just goes, 
as I as I look at this room, I go, he, she, he, she, he, she, he, she. Don't tell me I can't think that or something along those lines. Um, somebody said, did you see Lord Winston? Uh, I'm not sure if I know who that is. Um, oh, and I had a chat with Rosie Duffield. <laughs> this is like, ah. <laughs> Uh, it was hot. It was so, so hot. Um, outside and inside. So even if you wanted to go outside, the sun was blazing and it was re it's just hitting that side where there was the terrace. So there was nowhere to, to, to go for shade. Um, Robert Winston came out recently and called um trans surgery mutilation okay oh okay um and aromatica asks were rosie and tonya labor mps there yes so tonya came up to me i hadn't met her before uh i didn't know her so she just said oh mr meadow i love your videos and i'm like oh hi what's your name tonya what do you do i'm an mp okay let's talk um so we had a nice little chat she then introduced me to Rosie. So uh, it's good to just make, you know, connect, uh, have these conversations. Um, I've actually got a meeting with an MP in Wales tomorrow. So it was good to get some information there from other people to, to help me prepare for that. Um, Moody and Rudy says, you don't know Lord Winston. Now I know who it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, he also said, uh, he was the one who said, you can't change sex, right? Uh, that's him with the curly, curly black hair. Sir Robert Winston. Yes. Um, so it, 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 it kind of flew by this event and then, then sandwiches and cakes came out the cakes. The cakes, the cakes. I love cake and the scones, they had scones. They were so good. I didn't have any of the sandwiches. I just had cake uh, as I uh, sort of smooched around with the people there. And um, seeing Daddy Thompson was something else because I remember when I was 11 and um, in school they gave, in primary school, they gave out these, these exercise books and, um, and he was on the cover of one of them. And then he's in your face. Um, he was very friendly. But also... It was a very friendly crowd. It was really nice. It was so nice. Um, afterwards, um, a fair few of us went to uh, a cocktail bar. And that's where I felt the atmosphere change somewhat. Um, Sorry, someone's asking a question. Rianne and Wood, what do you think about the whole Ellen Stroke, Elliot Page and Jordan Peterson Twitter debate? Uh, I'm not too sure what's being said about it on Twitter, but I know that Jordan Peterson um, just refers to, uses the name Ellen and, and she, and uh, yeah, I'm all for that. Um, I'm all for that. I, I don't see why I should acknowledge Ellen as as a man, as as part of my sex clause, you know, with with you know these 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 whatever surgery she's had on her to make her jaw more square or whatever that was, and and having your breast amputated and some kind of six pack surgically etched into your body. Oh, now you're a man. Oh, really? Nah, no, sorry, hun, doesn't work like that. No, I did see um, Jordan Peterson's um, video response to being kicked off Twitter, and I thought that was fantastic, especially how at the end he wrapped it all up in a really beautiful way where he focused it all on women and girls and how they're being sucked into this and hurt by this. Um, and every time I see uh, pictures of, of uh, Ellen Page, 
I, I just I see someone looking very unhappy and unhealthy, even though she keeps talking about trans joy and trans euphoria. Anyways, um, poor thing. So, um, okay, so we're in the cocktail bar, and you know, people were having cocktails and wine and spritzers and whatever else, and um, it, it became quite emotional. Because so many, I think, so many of us had never been in the same room or not that many of us at the same time. And as I said, it felt like a, a reunion, e even though we, we don't necessarily all go that far back with one another. And um, then Kate Harris got up. And somebody asked earlier whether Kate Harris and Bev had matching outfits on purpose. I don't know, but they both had the same hats, which uh, I thought was kind of cool. So um, Charlotte's asking, I just jumped in here, so I missed some context, but Jordan Peterson is Canadian and just horrible, including virulently anti-Semitic. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, so Kate got up and said, um, let's do speeches, impromptu speeches. And she kicked it off. And then she nominated somebody else to go next. Uh, so this was spontaneous. And some of the speeches were very, very emotional. And it's understandable because quite a few of us, I say us, I'm obviously relatively quite a, a newcomer um, to this. I started putting videos up October 2020, so I'll be coming up to two years in, in, in a few months. But others, like Stephanie Davies or I, have been in this for years, you know, much longer. And have, if you think about all the work that goes into it, and like what Fair Play for Women have done, all the meetings they've tried to organize. Hi, Deidre. All the, all the petitions, all the legal actions, all the 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 craziness that you have to put up with, all the hatred, all the sleepless nights. Um, and there we were all together, um, knowing, knowing that and knowing what that's like, uh, some obviously more than others. And it was very emotional to see that acknowledged. There was one woman who was acknowledged in a speech by someone else um, who normally is behind the scenes. Uh, she'd lose her job if people knew that she was involved because that's how crazy the world is at the moment. And she, so she has to stay behind the scenes. People don't know about her or what she does. So when she got acknowledged, um, she broke down in tears, and there were a few tears, um, because it's it's not an easy thing to be involved in. Um, and again, Maya spoke, and she said something along the lines of, they came for women, and they didn't think that women and mothers would fight back. Uh, so... Some beautiful things were said, some inspirational things, but also it, it just really hits home in moments like that. Um, how much is involved and how much, and, and the toll that, you know, it, it's, it's, it comes with a, a heavy toll. Um, then afterwards we went to a pizza place and had pizza and I think, there was more wine, there was more beer, and it got even more emotional. So um, to be honest, for me, it got a bit too intense and too much. Um, but the pizza was good, and the chicken wings were amazing. Chicken wings with garlic and herb. Mm. So that was Monday. Um, I did think at the House of Lords when I looked around the room and later at the, the cocktail place, there are some 
formidable people in this. There are, of course, uh, some differences of opinion and uh, how you approach certain things and what tactics or strategies are the best. Uh, Misty Cats, was it pepperoni? It was American hot. Yes! <laughs> On a Romano base. Actually, I still have a slice of that in the fridge. That's probably gone off by now because I had one slice left over. Um, but I have a fresh pepperoni pizza that I'm going to have after this. So, yeah, my point was there were so many people doing so much good work. And some of them have brilliant minds, so much courage and stamina, which is what we need because we're not out of the woods. Um, Aromatica says it sounds like a funeral school reunion wedding rolled into one it kind of was this is my perspective okay others might have a very different take on it but um, it's obviously when, when there's so much at stake and people are so passionate about what they're doing um, there also comes a point where you need you need release where you just need to kind of blah, let it out, especially when you're with like-minded people and you're in a space where you can do that. So it's it's natural for these things to come out and it's good for these things to come out. And it's really beautiful to see how, how women supported one another when that happened. So um, I guess that's all that I had to say about Monday and about today. Um, tomorrow I'm off to the Welsh Senate, the Welsh Parliament, to have a meeting there. So obviously I do my videos, I go to protests and rallies, and now meeting with the MPs and Lords. So we're trying to, I'm trying to approach this from different angles try to make an impact where I can. So next dates in terms of what's in the diary, what, what events are happening. We have um, Speaker's Corner or Reformer Street on the 31st of July. So that's Kelly J. Keane and her Standing for Women thing uh, last Sunday of the month. So that's the 31st of July at 1 in the afternoon. Uh, I know one lady who's coming down all the way from Northumberland. It's going to be her first time. Then, oh, and I have to check when it is. So there's something happening in Scotland. I think it's the 6th or the 8th. Um, for Women Scotland are organising a protest outside um, Holyrood. So that's the, well, uh, sorry, the Scottish Parliament. I was there last year. Um, first week of September. So this is a similar thing. So have a look at the Twitter account for For Women Scotland um, and just check, check those dates because I thought it was either the 6th or the 8th. I'm, I'm not sure. But um, uh, they asked me to come, but, you know, it's, it's, it's quite far away. These train tickets are really expensive. So uh, I don't know if I'll be able to make that one. I hope so, obviously. Um, and then on the 18th of September uh, in Brighton, Kelly J. Keane is doing her Standing for Women event in, in Brighton. So uh, those are three things. Um, I'm meeting with a detransitioner on Monday. I'm going to go for a walk in the park, have some ice cream and just have a chat. And when am I? Deidre says, when are you in Wales again? Friday. So, uh, and I'll probably stick around for the for the weekend. Um, so, lots to do, and obviously, Rex is saying, "Bless you all, never surrender." Gloves off, and then Lorna Phillips is saying, "Rex, Lendy, calm down." I, I, I don't think you can say "calm down" to Rex a <laughs> hundred times. It's not going to happen. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Uh, 
All right, there we go. Uh, TPS, thank you so much for your uh, five American dollars. And you're saying Jordan Peterson is not anti-Semitic or racist, not perfect, but not evil at all. Yeah, that's new to me, um, these things. Um, anyways, so um, what else, what else, what else? Ooh, the LGB Alliance. Little Tree says mega bus. Yeah, I might have to get the mega bus. How long does that take? Eight hours? Oops. Um, LGB Alliance, right. The Mermaids uh, wants to take, uh, has taken legal action to, to take the LGB Alliance's charity status away from them um they've submitted so much evidence and they've got like three witnesses which uh, is a lot more than was expected initially so lgb alliance has had to um get add more uh people to their legal team and do more work to prepare for it all so they've had to up their fundraiser their crowdfunder by quite a, a, a big amount so um i'll post a link in the video descriptor, uh, description later on. Um, they, uh, yeah, uh, there's still a fair, a fair bit to, to crowdfund. Uh, Moody on Rudy, you're asking, how's, how is Alice, Alison Bailey doing? Well, she seemed fine uh, on Monday. Uh, she's waiting for the results uh, of, of her case. Um, there is also, um, somebody called Kate and she was one of the women who sang on the Magdalene Burns tribute as part of the adult human female choir and she's got some um she was housed or she's somewhere up north but she wants to move back to uh, I think uh, closer to her family and she's got a, a crowdfunder for that because uh, uh, she's got some some problems. Um, so I'm going to post a link to that as well uh, and maybe do a separate post about that um, to see if we can if we can help Katie get back home because uh, she's stuck somewhere up north and uh, she doesn't know anybody there and the neighbors is whatever she's a I don't want to give too much personal details away, but she's not in a good space and um, she's, she needs help to, to come back home. So I'm going to wrap it up. What time is it now? Wow, I've been talking. Okay, that's not bad. About 50 minutes. So I hope you all have a lovely evening. The people in New Zealand have um, a lovely day. And let me just check the chat for the last time somebody says i want a barbara streisand song before you close okay okay uh let me think of one. Oh, and somebody asked when is your next uh sound of music parody you know i was going to do another one i can't remember which one that was but the next song coming up is y chromosome so I've, I've, i'm getting it's quite an elaborate one so it's going to take a bit of time um i've got um some of the outfits ready, you need to get a few more. And then um, uh, KFP says, enough is enough as a Barbra Streisand song. You know what? I was I was having a chat with another gay man about how we're now told <laughs> that gay men have vaginas and we should accept them in our dating pool. And we both went, a muff is a muff. <laughs> na, 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 na. Um, so that might be another song. Who knows? Um, okay. So a Barbra Streisand song to finish up. Okay. I was on the train back from Brighton to London and then this Barbra Streisand song came on which you may it wasn't one of her big ones but it was on the album wet and she went kiss me in the rain make me feel like a child again bring back all those memories kiss me in the rain make me feel like a child again with the feeling that I get, I don't even mind if I get wet. And on that note, I shall love you and leave you. And I'll see you.
in the next one. Keep it real and keep smiling. Ciao.